Continuing with weather, let's look at wind. High pressure air will always seek to spread out or flow into areas of low pressure, so wind blows from a high pressure zone to a low pressure one. The closer these zones are to each other, the stronger the force, called the pressure gradient force, of the wind is. So pressure gradient causes wind to blow from high pressure to low pressure. It flows across or perpendicular to these lines of equal pressure called isobars. The rotation of the earth causes the wind to veer to the right in the northern hemisphere due to the Coriolis effect. So as the Coriolis veers the wind, it now blows parallel to the isobars instead of perpendicular. The combination of pressure gradient and Coriolis cause wind to flow so that lower pressure air is to the left and higher pressure air is to the right in the northern hemisphere, of course. Winds near the surface have a third force affecting them. Ground features like terrain and obstructions cause friction which slow the wind down. A slower wind doesn't veer as much so the Coriolis effect is less. The pressure gradient force is unchanged. Just because there's surface friction doesn't change the effect of having a high pressure and low pressure areas really close to each other. What this means is that the wind direction changes near the surface and curves in toward the low pressure area. This change in wind velocity and direction between winds aloft and at the surface can be abrupt and cause hazardous wind shear. This could happen in a condition such as a temperature inversion where cooler air is trapped below warmer air, so the winds at the surface don't mix with the winds aloft, creating a strong boundary layer with very different wind patterns on either side. This is common after sunset on a clear, windy day.